Why Procreate? Procreate has a robust range of tools that anyone can create with, from beginner to advanced. One thing I like about Procreate is the variety of work that students can create. With a range of tools, it's a fully loaded art studio. This assignment was to create an imaginary friend. Students are able to master and manipulate their tools so their work is uniquely their own. Some painterly, some graphic, some using photos, and some really combining all of those. This was an 11th grade art class during remote learning. To start the year, I asked students, what's on your mind? Here are two responses, both using drawing and text and procreate to create their message, both very different looks. This is a student who struggled to create work by hand. Because he was not happy with his work, he often would not do the work. The digital platform gave him tools that helped him succeed. Once he got into Procreate, he created a series of work based on his story, his world with his characters. He became fully engaged in the class as his confidence in himself and his art grew. The use of layers and variety of brushes and text positively impacted his work. This student is clearly a gifted artist, whether on paper or digital. In Procreate, she had a mobile studio which allowed her to create anywhere and anytime. She took her knowledge of paint onto the iPad to create a series of highly realistic portraits. No mess, no cleanup painting. Besides creating digital art for art's sake, students can also use Procreate to sketchnote, making visual their learning. These two were about goal setting. This is a page from a book created in Keynote. The textures on the bottom were created in Procreate and used to fill the shapes. Using image fills in Keynote is a great way to modify and personalize your shapes and text and Procreate brushes are perfect for the job. Here's another example of how Procreate can support your work in other apps. Here, textures and characters were made in Procreate and brought into AR Maker to create 3D environments. Procreate can also be used for motion graphics and animation. This is a project that reflects student work as they reference the Crush on Creativity tutorials. Students were tasked with creating a series of five self-portraits using a variety of tools to portray emotions or sides of their personality. They explored brushes, layers, adjustments, filters, and more. In this session, we will focus on the basics to get you and your students creating and procreate. Through this series, I will share my crush on creativity using Procreate. I hope you grow to love it too. Let's tour the interface and see what Procreate has to offer. Here's what Procreate looks like. There are many tools hidden under each section of the interface. We'll take a look at them. Our first tool reveals the brush library. Within this, you'll see a range of different kinds of brushes you can choose from. In addition, if you tap the brush, you'll bring up the characteristics and you can actually test your brush here. There's a lot of adjustments you can make. Next up is your smudger. It also has different brushes and you'll find the same thing with your eraser. Next up is your layer panel. We'll take a closer look at this later. And then we have the color chooser. Here you're gonna find a color wheel, your palettes, and we'll be looking at a lot of this another day. First up on the left, we have the actions panel. Under here, you'll see you can add files, copy, paste. Next, you'll find your canvas information, then an array of export options. Also, your video option, your preferences, which you can set up yourself later, and then the all-important help window. Procreate's handbook is super helpful to get started. Next, we have the adjustments panel. This allows you to do a lot of advanced editing. Here we have selections. There's lots of options. And last up, our transform panel. There's lots of options to transform your selections. Last up, our sidebar. The top slider controls your brush size, while the lower one controls opacity. 
and maybe the most important, the undo redo buttons. Before you start that drawing, you're going to want to make sure you have an appropriate size canvas. Procreate will open up to your gallery. You can see all of your work. To create a new canvas, you'll click the plus in the upper right corner. You will see it comes with many preset canvases. Plus at the bottom, I've added some of my own. But if you want to make your own custom sizes, find the plus at the top and it will give you options. First, you need to set dimensions. Procreate's default is in pixels. The first thing I do is select inches. I choose inches so I can easily print my work. Also in the top, you want to notice the DPI. For print, we want 300. With 300 and at this size, I have a maximum of 27 layers. That's plenty for what I'm going to be doing. You will see as the dimensions increase that the layers decrease. This is just something you have to balance. Next, you want to pick your color profile. As I said, I'm going to print this. So I usually stay in CMYK. Uh, RGB is best for digital, CMYK for printing. Also in this menu, you'll find time-lapse settings. Yes, Procreate time-lapse is everything you do. And the last thing you can pick is your background color. I'm just gonna go with white and then I will hit create. And now your canvas is ready to go. I'd like to make this a little bit more interactive. So let's set up a canvas so that you can explore while I go through the brushes and layers panels. Navigate to the gallery. In the upper right hand corner, you'll see a plus sign. Tap that and it will open up your choices for canvas sizes. For this, we're gonna use screen size. Screen size will give you a canvas that is approximately 15 by 20 inches at 132 DPI and gives you 182 layers. Once your canvas is open, tap on the paintbrush. That will open up the brush menu. As I start the next tutorial on brushes, you can play. Don't worry about what you're creating. There will be a creative challenge at the end. You'll find the brushes in the upper right corner. With them, you will be able to paint, smudge, and erase. Tap the paint icon to reveal the brush library. Brushes are organized in themed categories. The left side reveals sets organized by medium and style, while the right side lists all the available brushes under that category. I'm currently in organic. Simply tap your brush to reveal the brush studio. The brush studio allows you to tweak settings or build a new brush. With hundreds of settings, you can create limitless combinations. Use the space on the right to test your brush. Next, adjust the sliders and you can see how it will affect the stroke. You decide what's right for you. Procreate comes with an array of brush sets. Some are realistic, while others invented or conceptual. The most important thing is take time and see what will work for you. With the many brush options, the best thing you can do is just explore. Try the different things. See what you come up with and have fun doing it. These characteristics are also true for your smudger and your eraser. You want to make sure you are choosing appropriately. Brushes can also be organized with a long hold and just drag them around and place where you want. Same for your sets. With all the options Procreate offers, some of my favorites are still the basics, like the HB pencil and the round and flat brush. I guess it's my painter's spirit. I encourage you to explore, but there's nothing wrong with starting with the basics. Sometimes less is more. You will learn that layers will be your best friends. The layer icon is two stacked squares in the upper right hand corner. Tap that to open the layer pen. You can see the layers are almost like pieces of glass stacked on top of one another. Each one has its own drawing on it. If you make a change on one, it does not affect the others. Yet you can see through and they build up to make the whole drawing. Let's see how this drawing builds. Starting with all layers off, I will slowly turn them on and you can see how the drawing changes. 
Let's look at what's revealed under the layer panel. The top layer is blue. That means it's selective. It is the active layer that you're working on. On the far left, you will see a little thumbnail of what's on that layer. The layer number is just the order that they were made in. This can be renamed, and I really should do that. Next, you will see an N. That indicates the blend modes. We'll look at those in a minute. Check mark means that it's visible, so the layer is turned on. You can easily toggle the layer off, and that content will disappear from view. Tap the letter to open your blend mode panel. Here you can adjust your opacity, although there's other ways to do it. Also, you can see the different blend modes. Scroll through the blend modes to see what the different effects are. With a two finger tap on the layer, you can also bring up the opacity. There's a slider at the top you can adjust. Tap the layer to bring up the layer options panel. Here you can rename, select layers, copy, fill with color. You can clear a whole layer. Uh, the alpha lock we'll get to later, along with masking and clipping. They're kind of advanced options. Um, you can also merge your layers down to join them or combine down. There's a lot of options hiding in these layer panels. You really don't need to know everything to use them. With a swipe to the left on a single layer, you will reveal that you can lock duplicate or delete the layer. With one layer selected, you can swipe another one to the right and group them. That's the kind of darker blue one. You can continue to do this and then you'll see that they'll all move together. Now that we've looked at a lot of the layer options, let's see how we can put this all to use. Okay, here's an example of how I use layers. Sketch is a layer. Then working from the back to the front, filling layers. Draw one tree, duplicate the layer, move it around, transform it. That same tree becomes multiple trees. You can continue to build the layer without affecting anything else. Here's what my finished layer panel looks like. You can see that each part has its own layer. Open the layer panel and find the layer we want to draw on. Add a new layer above. With a long hold, you can turn that messy circle into perfection. Don't lift your Apple Pencil. Hold, tap again, and it will go from the oval to a circle. Tap on the color in the upper right, drag it down, and you can fill that shape. Let's add another layer, and we'll bring it underneath this one. Change our color. Let's draw a shadow underneath this ball. Oval, hold, tap the top to say edit, and now you can move that shape around. You can adjust it until you get it exactly where you want. The thing is, when you stop, it'll then be locked in place. Again, I'm going to fill this. This will also work with squares, rectangles, or just a line. Let's take a quick look at how to transform things once they're in place. Find your layer group, tap the arrow at the upper right. This will open transformation. Our objects are selected and now we can move them around. They'll work together. We can also scale them bigger or smaller. Now we will duplicate the top layer. It's sitting right on top of the ball, so you don't really see it. Again, hit transform. Now you'll be able to move it around and scale it. Let's reposition it. And let's do that one more time. Now you see how shapes and drawings can multiply just by duplicating layers. You need to be able to save your work. Go to the wrench, which is the actions panel. Tap share, then choose your file type. I'm gonna choose PNG. Tap save image to put it in your camera roll or share to Twitter. Get ready for the Wired Crush on Creativity Challenge. Design an advocacy or positivity poster. What do you think is important or what could lift 
the students and teachers in your school. Go to the gallery, tap plus, select screen size, then turn your iPad to choose your orientation. Do you want to work vertical or horizontal? Open the brush library and we will begin to create a background. Layer one is complete. Tap the plus to add a layer and choose another brush. As you go through brushes, continue to add new layers. It allows you to manipulate them. When you're satisfied with your background layers, stop, we're gonna add some text. You can add text using the actions panel. Tap the wrench, open add, and then add text. This will bring up a text menu and your keyboard. Change your text, and if you tap the toolbox, you will get even more tools. Here you can really format things, choosing font, style, size, spacing, tracking, etc. Play until you get it just where you want it. You can see when you add text, it comes in on its own layer which gives you additional options to transform. You can also create text by hand. Use the quick shapes. Just hold your line to keep your curves uniform and your line straight. When you're satisfied, go back to the actions panel, the wrench. Select share and then choose your format. I'm gonna share as a JPEG. You will have options for where you want to share. Save image to go to your camera roll or save to your favorite social media like Twitter. Now it's your turn. You have time to create bravely. Be sure to share on Twitter. Hashtag crush on creativity at create art. I would love to see what you create.